Thank you, members of the press. I'm uh, Honorable Babu Awino, member of parliament, Embakasi's constituency. And here I'm with my colleague, Honorable Amos Mwago, member of parliament, Stare constituency, where everything is taking place. And as you are aware of the current demonstrations, which are ongoing, and they are taking place at Honorable Amos Mwago's constituency which we will have something to talk about. Now, fellow Kenyans, we are made aware of a Kenya Kwisha parliamentary group meeting held today morning at State House, after which the chair of the Finance Committee announced some amendments to the Draconian Finance Bill 2024-2025. From the outset, it is important to note that the process of development of the finance bill has happened exclusively under the remote control of the president to the exclusion of members of parliament from the opposition concluding in today's PR exercise at State House that comes too little too late. This draconian finance bill is purely their baby, ugly as it is. I wish to take this opportunity to raise specific concerns that I have, re I have regarding the document and why I shall, pro I shall oppose and why I shall oppose it once it's tabled for debate today. Despite the removal of the 16% VAT on bread, the very idea demonstrates how diabolical and disconnected this administration is from the day today reality of life for ordinary Kenyans. The same can be said of their intention to charge excise duty on vegetable oil. While we welcome the removal of VAT on transportation of sugar, citing that it is the most significant cost in the value addition of sugar, the same should have been done on milk, which is equally costly due to the cold chain system needed to safely transport milk to processing plants. Kenyans watched in shock as Treasury PS Chris Kipto struggled to explain the rationale behind the 2.5% motor vehicle tax on live TV a few days ago. This demonstrates how haphazard the policy making in the government is. This is what happens when you, when you derogate your leadership responsibility to ambassadors to determine for you what to do. I maintain my belief that the housing levy is unconstitutional on the simple basis that housing is a devolved function as per Schedule 4 of the Constitution of Kenya. The national government has no business collecting money to build houses, and this is simply a political slash fund to finance Ruto's re-election campaign and 200 million shilling private jets. The eco levy is being levied on imported finished products the eco levy is being levied on imported finished products will place undue burden on the people of Kenya who rely on these products in their today in their day to day life. Locally, manufactured products are yet to meet the demand in terms of quality and quantity, and therefore, their exclusion from this levy shall not have the desired impact. Consequently, Kenyans are set to pay more for sanitary towels, diapers, phones computers, tires, and motorcycles. As I close, I wish to take this opportunity to condemn the mass arrests of peaceful protesters conducted by the police. This kind of government excess has been overtaken by time and is no longer acceptable. We demand for the immediate release of the people who have been arrested, for it is their constitutional right to picket and or to demonstrate peacefully. I wish to state it clearly, William Ruto, Kenya is not your personal property and you will not silence the people. We are giving police 24 hours to release these peaceful protesters without charge or we will move to court against the Inspector General of Police, Isaac Koome, in his individual capacity for gross violation of the freedom of speech and the right 
to picket and protest, which is enshrined in our Constitution 2010. As I add, today we have been treated to uh, an exercise, a PR exercise at State House, stating that there are some taxes which were imposed initially in the finance bill that have been dropped. I want to state clearly that Kenya as a nation depends on 80% of imported goods, including toothpick, tissue papers, foodstuff, including eggs, chicken. We are importing all these commodities. And therefore, as you purport to only remove the taxation on the locally produced goods, but you still raise the tax on the imports, the imported goods, the person who is going to bear this burden is the common mwananchi, is the border border rider, is the mamamboga on the ground, is the common mwananchi who is going to consume all these goods. And therefore, this is still going to raise the cost of living in our country. We are not going to accept to take it lightly, and we are urging Kenyans to still come out in large numbers, congratulating them for the demonstrations that they've held in Nairobi today. And we urge all Kenyans from different parts of this country to come out from every ward, from every constituency, from every sub-county, from every county, and the nationwide demonstrations should be held in a very coordinated way and manner to show this regime that the power belongs to the people. That Article 1 of the Kenyan Constitution gives us the mandate, gives the people the mandate that the sovereignty only belongs to the people and nobody else. Ruto, being the president of the country, has a fiduciary duty. He's only holding this seat in trust For Kenyans, this seat does not mean that it is his personal property. And therefore, without the removal of the, of the taxes on the imported goods, which is further going to raise the cost of living, therefore, demonstrations must just proceed as they've started. We will soon join you in these demonstrations after our debates. And I urge all members of parliament to still vote no, vote against the draconian, the oppressive finance bill that has caused untold sorrows in the lives of Kenyans. In our education sector, we want education to be made free. We want free education at the high school level. We want free education at the university level. And we also want free health care. We want health to be made free because Kenyans are suffering. It is not just about creating a problem, and then having a solution for that problem, as we've experienced today by the president. This chief PR we will not allow. You are only allowed to rig, to rig elections, but you cannot rig, you cannot rig an economy. You cannot rig development. And now we are waiting for you. Asante sana, I invite my colleague, Honorable Amos Mwago, to say a word. Mubabu. Uh, in congratulating Kenyans who have done a tremendous job both online and even the ones who have presented themselves physically today in the streets of Nairobi in Sare constituency. I support them fully and want to thank them for actually standing up and fighting against this draconian bill and actually bringing their leaders to account through SMSs, through pressure in the social media, bringing their MPs to the account to be true representatives of the people, to represent the people in what the people desire and their stand on this finance bill. We support the people's stand on finance bill about the, we are, we, are, we, are, we are rejecting the finance bill in totality, and actually we join in condemning the police for actually harassing people who are purported to be their bosses. The voters are the ones who are being taxed so that this police can be paid. Even the president himself, the deputy president, the government run. They rely on the taxes from the people who are demonstrating today. And it's very impunitive to actually punish the people who are your bosses. As you keep on telling us that you respect your bosses, you should start by respecting your bosses. If you are making decisions that harass, that do, uh, do not favor your bosses, you should respect those decisions. We are rejecting this finance bill in totality because in the last year we had another finance bill, 
which we rejected, but they used their numbers and marshaled up in parliament. They marshaled their numbers in parliament and had it passed. But we are asking, what are the implications of the last year's finance bill? What has it gained for the people? The impact it has had on the economy and how has it affected the livelihoods of our people? Before proceeding to another finance bill, we should be told how accountable and equitable was the last finance bill and how it has performed. Because we understand even the 11 targets, they missed them with the, with, the, with the last year's finance bill. So why are they introducing another finance bill? Okay, we understand today the PR exercise that my colleague is talking about in State House. It was done by a group of MPs from the Kenya Kusha government and the president and his cohorts. We are not aware of what amendments they have done, and that is why we are saying if they have done some amendments, we are asking the speaker to suspend the, debate, the, the tabling of that, the, the, that finance bill today, and we are asking for the Committee on Finance to go back and redraft a new finance bill and bring it back to the people for them to correct fresh ideas from the people and public participation to happen again so that we, there's no rush in passing this bill. Let, us, let Kenyans take time and address all issues which are agreeable to them. Let us pass the finance bill if it is agreeable to Kenyans. But there's no rush. We're asking for it to be suspended and we're asking for total withdrawal finance bill until they bring up another finance bill with the new amendments that favors Monenchi. That is when we shall have that discussion. Thank you so much. Any uh, question? Yes. You see that ambassador has uh, been talking with the current finance bill. I don't know if you've been kind enough to mention it to ambassador. About that, we are still getting uh, sufficient information, and we are going to release. It is not just one person, but several of them and we are going to remove a list of those who helped in drafting single-handedly this finance bill. And therefore, as I said earlier, that there are people who are purporting to be advisors of the president. But it is very unfortunate that the president uh, does not listen to even his advisors. As we said earlier, that he advises his advisors on how to advise him. And uh, because of that, because of that, the only public participation that the president will listen to is public demonstration. Vitu vyote ambavyo tunatumia hapa nchini Kenya, asilimia themanini, inatoka nje. Na ikitoka nje, ukiongeza ushuru kwa bidhaa kwa vitu ambavyo tunavitumia tuna hapa nchini Kenya, bei be zao zitaenda juu. Bei zikaenda juu, garama maisha itaenda juu. Wananchi wa Kenya hawataweza kununua bidhaa hivi kwa bei iliyo ya chini. So maisha bado itakuwa juu tu. Sasa serikali na tudanganya ya kwamba vitu ambavyo viko hapa chini. How do you talk on a national television and say clearly that things like diapers and pads are imported, even if they are being imported? 60% of Kenyans can't afford pads. Why are you introducing taxes on pads? If you go to Trukana, you go to some different parts of this country, you find that people are using clothes taking dignity away from our girls and our women. If you go to certain parts of Kilifi, people are using soil. I managed to go to different parts when I was doing a presidential campaign. People are using soil, people are using leaves, people are using clothes. That is the reality on the ground. 60% of our women and our girls cannot afford these parts. Then in your lack of wisdom, you clearly, boastly say that you are introducing taxation on such items Honestly, shame on you, the Kenya Kwanza government. This is shameful because we are taking the confidence, the dignity, and there will be serious stigma. So I don't know what country is being run just in the name of saying that you are importing parts. And the moment you import the parts, is that cost not going to be met by the common Mwanainchi? The moment you import uh, uh, cement, is that cost not going to be uh, met by the Mwanainchi? The moment you import uh, maize, unga, is that cost not going to be met uh, by the Mwanainchi because the tax has been increased on it? So any other thing that is being imported, the cost will go high. The cost of living will still be high. So there is nothing that has been solved. 
So Kenyans should proceed with these demonstrations, and they should demonstrate outside the state house. And Ruto should come out and address them, not talking while he's scared inside the state house. Yes. Let me say today, we are given the 190s their power to protest and demonstrate. Because every other time when demonstrations are called in this country, the political class tends to assume as the opposition are mobilized. But today it was purely out of the goodwill of 190. The people have come out with zero mobilization. They have come out to the streets to demonstrate on their own. We did not want to interfere, to interfere with the process because we didn't want it to be lab, uh, labeled an Azimio demonstration plan, they have seen Kenyans themselves come out and demonstrate again in this finance bill. And I think the, the message is clear as day and night. The people are tired now. And as the, the general of Sare constituency, we have given them freedom and power to demonstrate in these constituencies of mine because my people have to express. They have the right to pick it. They have the right to express whatever they think about this finance bill. And as their leaders, their general, I'm at the forefront in rejecting this finance bill and saying no to this finance bill. And it's only good that they have also come out to support me in this struggle. Because we may, have, we may not have numbers in parliament, but we have numbers on the streets, and we have numbers at home, and we have numbers with the local Mwanainti. Thank you. Tukosawa? Na shukuru sana kuandishi wa abari.